Imam towards the end of the sermon, he says, I'm surprised at the one. Now you'll be a little bit shocked to hear this from the Imam, but we'll elaborate by what he means. The Imam says, I'm actually surprised at the one who sleeps well at night, not feeling anxious whatsoever. When heaven and hell are the destination we're going to. What does the Imam mean by that? So we know that anxiety is not good, obviously. Who wants to be in a state of anxiety? But when you're approaching something serious, let's say tomorrow is the day of the interview that will determine your career, or tomorrow is the final exam day, or you have a very important trip tomorrow. Honestly, when you sleep at night, how do you sleep? Yes, maybe you could sleep well, but see, there's a level of anxiety, right? Why? Why is it that if tomorrow is your interview and you're prepared, you're fine, you're prepared, you know what you're doing. Why do you feel some level of anxiety? Because you're serious about that appointment, right? You know how important it is. There is a healthy level of anxiety, brothers and sisters, there is. Yes, sometimes it becomes uncontrollable, it becomes a psychological disorder, needs to be treated. But some level of anxiety, the Imam says at night when you sleep, be worried about the next day in terms of the good deeds that you're going to commit. Don't say, yeah, today's just another day. I'll go about my lifestyle and my habits and a lot of them are bad habits and waste time. No, when you sleep at night, be concerned that I have this journey ahead of me. Am I prepared for it or no? In other words, the Imam says, take it seriously. If you sleep, not caring whatsoever, the one says, you're not taking seriously. The one says, I'm surprised at the one who sleeps without any concern about this journey. Some level of concern and anxiety, it's good. It keeps you in check. That way you wake up in the morning, you're like, I have a goal today. I'm not going to waste a single minute. Every opportunity to, go, to a, do a good deed, I'll take advantage of that opportunity. Because I know there is a big journey ahead of me. Yes, Allah is merciful. No doubt about that, my dear brothers and sisters. But remember that race? You're racing, let's say, with 70 billion people. Don't you want to be the first in the race? The second, top 10, top 100, top 1,000, let's even say top million. You're lucky if you make it to the top million out of 70 million, right? The Imam says, look, if you want to be in the top 1,000 or top 1 million, you have to be prepared. Yes, Allah is merciful. He forgives as much as there is room for forgiveness. But the Imam is teaching you, win the race. Be a winner on the day of judgment. It's a marathon. We all want to win, right? If I lose in the race or I don't really do well, I'll be disappointed. In a small worldly race, we, we get disappointed, don't we? Now imagine the race of the hereafter, the ultimate race, the final race, and it's only one race. The Imam says, be a winner in that race. But the way that you can do that is in this world. As long as you still are alive, Allah has given you the resources to do that which is right. To take advantage of these numbered days in this world. Be good to your family, to your parents, to your children. It's not worth it. Be good to your loved ones, to your friends. Be charitable. And remember this Qur'an? This Qur'an will be the greatest source of light on the Day of Judgment. The Hadith states on the Day of Judgment, and it's a difficult day. There are many, you know, checkpoints we have to go through. Many, many different passages we have to go through. And remember that final passage, which is the Bridge of Sirat, which the Hadith describes it, as narrower than what? Than a thread. And sharper than a sword. We were, we're all, we're all going to cross that. Now the Holy Quran tells us that bridge will cross over what? What does it cross over to get you to heaven? Yeah? It crosses over hell. The hadith says, on the of judgment for those believers who were good with the Quran. They read the Quran, they studied the Quran and they... More importantly, implemented it. It's the implementation that counts. Somebody could read it like a parrot. That doesn't do them any good. No, to implement the teachings of the Quran on the day of judgment, this Quran will transform 
into a beautiful figure. The hadith says, on the day of judgment, the person, you know, has anxiety. It's a difficult day. Look at Surah Al-Hajj. Allah describes it. Allah describes the day of judgment in Surah Al-Hajj. It is a difficult day. Such that a woman who's breastfeeding her child, the Quran makes this description, brothers and sisters. These are the words of God. We should be familiar with the words of God. يَوْمَ تَذْهَلُ كُلُّ مُرْضِعَةٍ عَمَّا أَرْضَعَتٍ the Quran says that day is so serious and severe that even a woman who's breastfeeding her child, and you know that's like the closest uh, state a woman is, a mother is to her child. The Quran says a woman who's in that state, she'll forget about her child. She won't even know what she's doing. And a pregnant woman will miscarry. And you see the people, they're like drunk. But the Quran says, No, they're not drunk. But that day is a severe day. So on that severe day, the believer sees this beautiful image guiding him, showing him how to make it to the bridge of Sarat and then holding him firm on that bridge and walks him to paradise. That beautiful figure takes you to the entrance of paradise and tells you here, enter, I've done my job. You look at that figure and you tell that figure, who are you? You've been so good to me. You saved me from all these risks. Who are you? Introduce yourself to me. What will that beautiful figure say? I am the Quran. I am the book of God that you implemented in your life. You were good to me in your life. Now I'd like to pay you back. And God has commanded me to save you. The Quran will save us on the day of judgment. So my dear brothers and sisters, Allah's rahmah is primarily to be seen on the day of judgment. No doubt about that. But the day of judgment as the Quran calls it is the day of hasra, the day of regret. Even the good doers, the believers, they'll say, why did I not do more? Why did I waste time on earth? Busy with other things that didn't matter. So the Imam السلام, in this beautiful sermon, and I urge all of you to study Nahj al -Balagha. It's a beautiful book that really sometimes recalibrates how we view life, how we live in this life. The words of the Imams, the words of the Quran, they actually illuminate our hearts. They keep us firm and prepared for the day of judgment. So Allah is merciful, but my dear brothers and sisters, there's a race, there's a grand marathon tomorrow on the day of judgment. Let's be prepared for that race. Inshallah, all of you will be winners in that race. The best of the best. On the top charts, inshallah, right? The top charts of this dunya mean nothing, believe me. The top charts here have nothing to do with success on the day of judgment. In fact, sometimes top charts here are a liability on the day of judgment because they distracted so many people. Not all top charts, some of them. Maybe they were a distraction. Maybe they encouraged people to immorality. Top charts here become liability. But it's the good deeds that will give us success on the day of judgment.